In this video, we're going to install IBM Security Directory Server, or SDS, and do some basic configuration. Now, I'll be using PDF versions of this online documentation, but you can search online for anything you see in the PDF and find it there. First, you should read the requirements. At the time of this recording, these were the RAM requirements. I'll be using RHEL 7, and you can see its compatibility here. You'll also need these products, which come in the download, DB2, GSKit, C Client, SDK for Java and a Java client. These are the components that we'll install. Notice that SDS is built on OpenLDAP. If you're familiar with OpenLDAP, then you'll recognize the proxy server is actually OpenLDAP and SLAPD is the server component. You can also optionally install a GUI utility by using WebSphere application server with the web administration tool. Here are some useful paths and here is a path command that you can use. So if you'd like to just type in LDAP search, this would let you do it. We will be installing on this version of RHEL, and specifically we'll use an ISO image to get the files for the installation. And those files I uploaded to temp sds, here is the ISO file. This file here is part of the licensing premium feature activation. And now let's go ahead and mount this, and that ISO's contents should look like this. We'll switch to mnt and do an ll. Armed with those files, let's go into our GUI and right click open a terminal and I'll LL same files. And the script we want to run is this one. So I'll do like so. This screen should appear. That screen is the IBM installation manager. And this is the first of two ways to do the installation. The other way is to install the RPM files or operating system command line utilities, as it says here, which we're not going to do. The installation manager is a requirement and it lets you do things like install and modify and remove installations of various types of software. So let's hit next and accept and next. And the instructions tell us to use this path. So I've gone ahead and pasted that in here and click next. And it should look like this. Now notice we're not installing SDS yet, just the installation manager, which will itself do the install for SDS. And click here and it should relaunch. Now you might think that the big install button is what you have to click, but that will fail because it doesn't have anything to install. To find things to install, go to File, Preferences, click on Add Repository, click on Browse, click on Mount, and go down to SDS. There's our repository, and we can click on OK, and you'll see it's listed. But we also need to install the features. So in my case, I put that under the temp folder. So we'll go in here, and there it is, and click OK and click OK, and notice this message. That's because we need to unzip this. So let's do that. And then here I'll click No and browse again. And I will make sure that I'm on the file system and go down to temp and SDS. And now we should see a folder, click on that, entitlement, and we should see our repository. And we can click OK, and then we'll click on OK. And now we should be able to click on install and it has something to do. I'm going to select both of these and click on next and accept the terms and next and then click next and click on next and click on next again. And on this screen, we need to provide all three of these directories. So we'll click on browse and go to mount. The first one is DB2. So we'll click there and click on OK. The icon should change to this. It should not give you an error message or a big red X. Then we'll go down to the next one. This is GSKit, same idea here. So we'll go to mount and GSKit and okay. And then onto SDK Java, same idea. Go browse and we'll go to mount and JDK and okay and next. Click on install. I'm going to click okay here. And we're going to get this error message and it's because I skipped a step. And if you get this, it's very easy to fix. You need to install the corn shell with this command. And the corn shell is actually very important because it's required for the directory server instance owner, the DB2 instance owner, the database owner, all of them have to use the KSH or the corn shell to function properly. That also applies to the IDS, LDAP, user, and group. And by the way, you'll often see IDS, which is IBM Directory Services, prefixed to many of the open LDAP commands and components. So for example, here are the main log directories, and you'll see IDS slap D. Okay, now I've completed the installation of the corn shell. 
But there's another dependency that we still have to meet, and that is, remember the IDS LDAP account, that's both a group and a user? We need to manually create those because it will not be done for us by the installer. And here are the commands, they're listed in the document. So I'll just paste them in here, which will look like this. And I'll enter my password, and then we'll do a user mod, which will add a group called IDS lap, that's what we were just talking about, to the root account because that's a requirement for the install. And then we can do a groups root to see all the groups that it's a member of. And now we can try this again. However, I would recommend that you first log out in this case and log back in to pick up those new group memberships. Now, this is good for troubleshooting. If you try to rerun the installation from slash mount, it's going to tell you, well, you've already installed the installation manager, so launch it from here. So we'll do that. So I cd'd into that directory and I'm launching IBM IM. And from here, you can just click install because our repositories are still in place. And again, same as before. So just next, 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 select these same options from before and now click install. It will take some time to install DB2 as it creates a database. And once it's done, you can launch the IAT and click finish. And this begins the configuration portion. Now, you can also launch the installation manager, not necessarily from the command line, but here. And this tool we're seeing on the right, you can launch right here. Now, our goal is to create an instance. An instance is essentially an installation. So there's one for the directory server and there's one for the database, so that's DB2. The owner is the operating system account that will be the owner for that instance. Then separately, you'll have something called just the database owner, and this is at a DB2 level who is essentially owning that database. And DB2 doesn't actually have a database owner, but there's more information if you look up DBADM. So let's click on create an instance. The first time you do this, it's best to just create a default instance. Then as you get more experience, it's better to create one of these potentially so that you can customize things. Now, if you just do this, you'll install the directory server. If you want the proxy, remember that's open LDAP, then you would click this. We're going to click default, click next. That will create an instance owner for the database. It will also create a super user for the LDAP repository for the DIT, that's your administrator DN. And you'll also be asked to give some encryption seed information. And it summarizes that information here, which is also summarized in the Knowledge Center. And I'll click on Finish. And here you can see it doing the work of that creation. And here you can see the DB2 portion. You can see the database name, dsrdbm01. And you can see that it added a suffix, that's the root of your directory. And when it's finished, it should say task completed, and I'll click on Close. Notice that the server state is stopped. And now I'm going to create a proxy. So click on set up a proxy next. So like before, we need to create a user account. And here there are restrictions, again, like before, where we need to create the user accounts prior to using the GUI. And we're going to use this command to set up the user account. The user account is here, dash u, there's the group, and this is the home directory, this is the password, and this command has the advantage of using the corn shell, configuring it for that user. And of course, if you get this, you just need to locate the folder where that command is at. So I'll cd in there and rerun that command. Don't forget to prefix it with a dot forward slash, and then just look at all of the things this will do for us, that's handy, and it's gone ahead and done those things. Now take a look. If I cat Etsy password, there it is our account and notice it's using the corn shell. So now that we've done that, we can hit cancel here because if we just hit the down arrow, we won't see that account. So we'll try it again. There's our account and we'll click on browse. The instance location is actually the home directory of the account that we chose. I'll type in a password, click on next. This screen binds the proxy to all of your network cards and the IP addresses there. Enter any IP addresses. Notice that these are the same as you would expect 389 and 636, but preceded with a one. And we'll configure the administrator DN password. I'll type in a password, click next, and notice all the things that are going to happen. And I'll click on finish and click on close. Okay, now we have both of these set up. So now let's start them. And before we do that, just notice that you can manage these, you can edit the TCP IP settings, you can delete them, view them, get additional information. But for now, we just want to start this. 
Notice that the server state is stopped, but the administration server is started. We want to start the server and that worked. We see task completed and we'll click on close. We should see started and we'll move on to the proxy now. Same thing, click on start server. That completes quite a bit faster. Click on OK and close and we see it in stop still. That is because for a proxy, you first need to configure it, which you do with the manage button here. That will bring up this screen. You can cycle through each of these looking for any problems. We're going to manage suffixes. There's our first one. To find out what that is, I'm going to move this over to the right. Then I'm going to click on our first server, go down to manage and put this screen on the left. Now we can compare the two side by side and you can see there's quite a few more options for the server. But I'm going down to suffixes so we can match up the suffixes. You'll see there's one for localhost and there's one for sample. So on the right for my suffix dn, I'm going to type o equals sample and click on add. And then I'm going to click on OK. Then go back to our proxy and click on start and start server. Now mine continues to give me an error and the reason is shown in this file as it tells us to look in is that it failed to load the plugin for the proxy. To fix that, go back to the installation manager, click on modify, click next, and now open this and you'll see I never installed the proxy server and I also never installed the web administration tool. So if you want those, check those and then click on next. And for whiles I don't have it installed here, I will deploy it later and click on modify and click on finish. Go back to the screen, click on start. And now we see that error message has gone away. Hopefully that's enough information to get you started with IBM SDS.